Okay. Hi everyone, Red Thinny Stripe Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new collaborative Rico Nasty and Kenny Beats project, Anger Management. When it's come to the explosion of hyper-aggressive SoundCloud rap, distorted, bumping beats, screaming on top of them, few voices have stood out as boldly as Rico Nasties. And I would say her uncompromising personality has the potential to make her bigger than the trend itself. I mean, she's already outlasting it at this point. And before this review, before this record, I already had this feeling that Rico Nasty at this point has nowhere to go but up. Even if her breakthrough project last year, Nasty, was a little one-dimensional, it was unique, it was aggressive, it was in your face, but there were still some aspects of it that felt like Rico was still just in the the middle of this period of evolution. And honestly, it wasn't really that long ago where Rico was auto-crooning over some very smooth, glitzy, and glamorous trap beats on her Sugar Trap 2 mixtape. The transition from this to singles like Trust Issues and Rage is actually incredible. And I think it'd be foolish to assume that this is just where Rico is going to stop because she's got a bit of popularity. So with Rico's future projects, I'm pretty excited to hear something with more variety and with her new project over here, bringing Kenny Beats on to basically take part in every track on this thing, given that he is such a talented producer, can only be a positive. However, anger management is hardly the sound of Rico building up or taking a huge next step, in my opinion. It feels more like a quick EP just meant to hold fans over for maybe something more substantive down the road. It's really hard to tell at this point. Given the unorthodoxy of the rap landscape that Rico Nasty comes from, compiled with the fact that streaming, in a lot of respects, has totally torn down the expectations of what a proper album length is at this point. Given Anger Management's nine tracks in 19 minutes, I can't also help but feel like there's an element of pressure for Rico Nasty to continue striking while the iron is hot, as she is thriving in a landscape of oversaturation. So as a result of its brevity, yeah, there's not a whole lot to anger management. I'll say there's definitely more emotional versatility to this project, as the track list front loads a ton of bangers on here, and then after a transitional sketch or interlude, the record starts delivering more cuts from Rico that are actually kind of introspective. The track Relative, the track Sellout, the track Again. And these are songs where Rico is a bit more honest about what drives her and what she hopes to get out of her music. How she sees power in the expression of anger. How she sees her art as an outlet and how she would like to use it to bolster herself up and help those who she loves around her. And there's also moments where she's kind of giving her audience tidbits of inspiration, admiring them for being focused and going through tough times with a brave face. It's certainly more tasteful and thoughtful than some of the more mellow cuts Rico has dropped on past albums, and reveals a side of her that we don't often see in this much depth on a project, although it, it relatively this is a pretty short amount of songs. So even though we are getting a glimpse of this, it's almost barely a glimpse. It's kind of like a snapshot. Especially given the song Relative is one of the shortest and most low-impact songs on the entire project. Still, some of the harder-hitting cuts on this thing are pretty incredible. The opening track, Cold, is amazing. Rico is screaming her brains out on this blood-boiling refrain. None of these bitches cold as me! Me! Rico's flow and her verses on this track sound absolutely manic, like she is in desperate need of an exorcism. Her screamed ad-libs throughout the song make me feel like I'm experiencing some kind of psychosis. Also, the instrumental on this thing is killer. The loads of distortion, the crushing bass hits, and the mostly buried skittering percussion. Then there's the track Cheat Code, where Bauer enters the fold on the production, and he seems to bring almost like an EDM vibe to the track track, and along with Kenny, splashes of industrial music and horror movie soundtracks, as well as like punk 
rap. The distorted, relentless beat on this thing is hideous. It is ugly. I think in most contexts with most rappers, it would not sound very good, but Rico's incredibly <laughs> nasty, raspy voice just slices right through it like a neon pink chainsaw. I'll say not a whole lot of the lyrics on this track are super intelligible, but it's really about the aggression and the vibe of it. And there's a pretty great buildup on the chorus too. The song Big Titties featuring Earth Gang is absolutely hilarious and zany. I love the bassy, colorful beat on this one. Bauer is in the fold once again. The guest verses from Earth Gang on this cut are incredible, probably the best feature on this entire project. They have great chemistry with Rico here and they're equally eccentric rap deliveries complement hers so well. Smooth flows, hilarious hook on this thing. Yeah, sure, maybe the lyrics are a little shallow, but I think that is easily made up for in just how ridiculous the track is. Now, there are a few head scratchers in the track list here, namely uh, the cut Hayden, which is literally just a redo of Jay-Z's Dirt Off Your Shoulder. And hey, Love the track. I mean, I remember when it dropped. It was an incredible single. And there are some kind of subtle instrumental changes made to the beat as well. And I love Rico's themes on this track of independence and self-sufficiency. The song Mood featuring Splurge, who I think I'm just hearing of for the first time on this track, was kind of odd given that, uh, Splurge's feature here is so awkward and mumbly and weak. It sort of reminds me of a, a bad flow in a verse off of a recent Little Yachty album. Also, the kind of plain, basic structure of this track isn't doing it many favors either. The chemistry level on this thing is super low. Uh, it's easily my least favorite on the entire album and, and really painfully forgettable. A track on a record that is so short that it can't really afford to have a dud on it. Still, I would say on average in comparison with Nasty, anger management may be an improvement because there's very little on this project that uh, isn't worth listening to, but I feel like we've only gotten there by scaling the project back so far that we're just reducing our chances of getting a dud. Do I see Rico progressing on this record even though it is short and has severely left me wanting more? I guess a bit because it is kind of refreshing to hear moments like The Closer where Rico Rico does get a bit more personal. I also like the recurring themes of anger and dealing with your emotions on this record too. What you see on the outside versus what you actually feel on the inside. So there are a lot of great things about anger management, very good tracks on anger management. Rico continues to be one of the more bold voices in the current rap landscape. This is easily her most consistent project so far, but, 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 I do think its brevity is to its detriment. And as much as I do like some of the more aggressive tracks on here, I'm yet to really feel like Rico has truly topped some of her best past singles, such as Rage, for example. Still though, feeling a strong six to a light seven on anger management, Tran, Zition, have you given this record a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like, please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Rico Nasty, Anger Management, Forever.